This is one of my favorite sounds I've heard all year. And this is what it sounds like when I try to make that sound myself. Now let's go back in time before I had any idea how to make that synth. I wanna show you how I remake my favorite sounds. Then at the end, I'm gonna show you how to tweak them to make them your own. So now we're back before I figured out how to make this sound and I've showed you the preview of what it sounds like. So I'm gonna try to make that main lead sound you hear. So let's put 30 minutes on the clock and see if I can finish it before that. Before we start, it's a few days later now and we actually just hit 100,000 subscribers. So I wanted to give you guys something to celebrate. For BigZSounds.com, which has all my sample packs and preset packs, I'm doing 50% off everything. All you have to do is type in the code 100K at checkout. Then for BigZCourses.com, which has my new music production course, I'm also doing 50% off. But for that one, you have to use the specific link down below for it to automatically apply the discount at checkout. It's awesome that we've built this community of 100,000 people now that like to fuck around and make computer music. So thank you guys so much. I'll remind you of all those details at the end so you can just keep watching the video. Anyway, back to making the synth sound. I threw my headphones on so it's easier to hear everything in the sound design. Let's start the clock right now. So there's really four steps to remaking a sound. And the first step is the setup. So in the song, I've already identified like what part I wanna reference for the sound, which is this part right here. So I'm just gonna loop that one part so I can continually reference that back and forth. So now the first thing I need to do before doing anything else, even with this initial serum preset, it's just get the notes in there, get the right MIDI notes in there. So here I'm just listening back and forth to the original track to copy down the same melody. Obviously that's the wrong octave, and the reason for that is I always want to use the notes in the middle of the keyboard and change the octave in the synth, not in the MIDI notes. Later, when I'm finished this preset and I'm making a new song and I'm scrolling through presets, I want all of the new presets that come up to be in the right octave already. So I don't want anything to be like way too low or way too high when I'm testing out new sounds for a song. So now everything is totally set up. I can easily move back and forth from the reference to the synth and test out things to make this sound. So the second step here is to shape the sound. I'm gonna use this envelope down here and also just a filter in the effects section to try to figure out what the shape of the sound is before we figure out the tone or the effects or anything else. Like, is it a really short, plucky sound? Or is it more atmospheric sound with a really long release? So this is where I always start when it comes to sound design. So let's bring that back in and try to figure out the shape of this sound. So it really sounds like there's not a sharp attack to it. There's a smoother attack. So I'm gonna move this up. Also, it's a lead sound, so we want it in mono down here. So let's uh, attach that to this filter over here, this filter cutoff, and see what happens. It's a big lead sound, so the filter is gonna be wide open. And here I'm just experimenting a little more to nail down the right shape. We still got a lot of work to do, but that's gonna be the base for the whole sound. Now we can move on to the third step, which is experimenting with the wave tables. So depending on the sound, this part can take forever because sometimes it's really hard to find the right tone for a sound. So this is usually when I just open up some wavetables and I just scroll through. And try to find one that matches the character of the original sound. Now, luckily for us, a lot of sounds in electronic music are just saw waves. In this case, it really sounds like a saw wave to me. Good way to test this is we can open up an EQ in the master bus and really look at what this sound is doing. So I'm just gonna take out the bass and try to focus on this sound. Now if we go back to our synth, that's definitely the wrong waveform. So let me go back to a saw wave. So I'm just go to basic shapes, then I'll go to saw wave right here. So let's look at this waveform now. Now if I'm looking at like the peaks, the individual harmonic peaks of the frequencies in the original song, it does look like it has similar characteristics to the saw wave. So I think that's a good starting point right there. But depending on the sound, this step can get really complicated because sometimes it's a mix between 
two different waves that you have no idea to try to find the right character for the sound. Or sometimes you're using like FM synthesis, like I could do FM from B to try to find a different type of sound. But luckily in this case, it really just sounds like it's a straight saw wave. So I'm just gonna stick with that for now. Now, another main character of the sound I'm hearing is there's definitely white noise or some kind of noise involved. So I'm gonna open up this noise filter. And first of all, you can see in Serum, when you open up a noise filter, Let's go to bright white noise. There's all this low end white noise. And that's just gonna make our sound muddy. So what I'm gonna do in this case is just send this sound through a high pass filter. So I'll go to high, then I'll set up this filter to only go through the noise oscillator. So you can see I can cut off the low end of that noise doing this trick. So let's have this envelope also affect the level of the noise envelope. And let's just see how that sounds mixed in with the main oscillator. And we can cycle through some different options for sounds. I like this alpha and Z noise. It's kind of like a really thick white noise. So let's just go with that for now. So now we have a solid bass for the synth sound. Now we can move on to step four, which is adding effects and fine tuning. And this is really the most important part is where you take your sound from being cheesy to actually sounding professional. So I haven't added any compression or reverb or delay or anything yet. So let's just start with some basic multiband compression. I think that actually sounds good on this sound. Sometimes the multiband compression in Serum really messes up a sound, but I think it sounds like in this case, there is some kind of multiband compression on the synth in the original version. And we're gonna need to tame some harsh frequencies that I'm hearing later. Let's just start with that for now. And I'll add a reverb and delay also. Let's try a dotted eighth note. That's kind of what it sounds like. There's definitely some ping pong delay going on. So let's go to the dotted setting. Now I'm gonna add some reverb. When I add reverb in Serum, I like to put the mix all the way up at wet. So it's gonna sound terrible, but it helps us kind of hone in the right sound. And I just spent a little more time here dialing in the reverb. Now let's mix that in with the original signal. My wavetable right here just has one voice of unison. This is another thing I could have messed around with in the wavetable step. But honestly, in this case, it actually sounds like the lead just has one voice of unison. But what we can do in the effects section is make it a little wider. So I'm just gonna use this dimension expander to widen it up a little bit. So that's sounding pretty good. I'm just gonna reference back and forth with an EQ to check out the tone, because the tone just feels a little off. At this point, I knew I was getting closer, but in sound design, it always comes down to small changes that can take the synth to the next level. So first of all, I'm gonna match the volumes by turning this up. Now you can see the low frequencies of the leads are matching up in volume. But there's definitely some harsh frequencies around this area, like 3,500 hertz. Another thing I'm noticing is this mid-range is kind of lacking in my synth compared to the other synth. So I can actually fix that with the multiband compressor. I just boosted up the mids a little bit. We can also do that with an EQ. So I'm gonna get rid of those harsh frequencies I was hearing around like 3,500 hertz. So let's check those out. I'm gonna use this band over here, bring it to 3,500. And actually for now, I have a second screen over here. I'm just gonna move this EQ over the second screen. You guys won't be able to see it, but just know I'm referencing what the frequencies are looking like on that EQ. So I just spent some time messing around with the EQ to get a better tone. So the EQ in Serum isn't super detailed, so you can barely see these lines, but I think I've dialed in a good EQ to help the tone out a little bit. So what I've done is decrease the area around 3,500 hertz by a couple dBs, and I've boosted the super high end around like 12,000 hertz. So before and after. 
just helps it sound a little more professional. Another thing I haven't done is add any distortion. Sometimes that can help the harmonic sound a little more pleasing. So let's try it out. So I just usually like to cycle through the different kinds of distortion. <laughs> Here I'm just testing out all the different types of distortion. That distortion sounds pretty nice actually. It makes it sound a little grittier and that white noise is running through it too. At this point I just spent some extra time fine tuning all the effects. So I've gone back and forth messing with it a little more and I really like how everything's sounding. So obviously there's a couple more things we have to do. In the original, the cutoff of the filter is being automated, and I think I'm hearing the notes glide into each other. So I'm gonna go down to this portamento function. And let's make a macro control that closes the filter. So I'm gonna grab that, map it to the filter cutoff, and we can automate that. Also when it closes, it sounds like the attack gets a little less smooth and a little sharper. So let's do that as well. That sounds pretty cool. So let's automate that real quick. Here I'm just writing in the automation onto the track. It sounds a little more open at the beginning in the reference. So maybe I need to turn up the white noise or make something a little louder in the high end. I actually ended up adding an EQ to the sound to finish it off because I felt like the mids and the super high end needed to come out a little more. Actually, I think we pretty much nailed it within those 30 minutes with a little extra time to spare. Here's the original and here's my version. So now we know everything is sounding professional, we can use this as a template to create our own sounds out of it. An easy thing to do would just be add another layer. So let's get like a... Uh, I don't know, let's use this random square wave in here. That sounds pretty cool. I mean, it's fun just to mess around adding new layers. Let's add two voices of unison so it's wider. I mean, that almost sounds cooler than the original sound. We could also change the whole shape of the sound. So I'll just bring that down, bring the decay down. Or I could run all the oscillators through a crazy formant filter. So it's great to have a professional starting point that you can build whatever sound you want on top of. And if you don't feel like making your own sounds, you can just use mine. Here are all the details again for the sale I'm doing to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. I really appreciate every one of you guys that's ever watched a video or used one of my sounds or taken my course or had me mix one of your tracks. Thank you guys. I've got big plans for the channel, so hopefully the content just keeps getting better and better over time. Thanks for watching. Peace.